Hey everybody, Jim Neve here again. Uh, tonight we're doing a quick video on a couple of modifications I just made to my Avid CNC. Um, I added a crosshair laser in anticipation of switching over to Avid's new CX or EX control unit. Um, they've added some offsetting features to use with a crosshair. Um, I had one previously on my last dust shoe, so I needed to get around to doing this anyway. So uh, this was a good impetus to get that done. The second thing was I also had a light built into my old dust boot uh, that I used to kind of see what's going on when I'm cutting and stuff, and it also helps in filming and stuff. And when I got the new Avid dust boot, that thing's awesome, but it doesn't have a light in it. So I wanted to show you what I did there, and uh, I'll link down some of the components if you're interested in doing this. Um, you can also get those parts and do this. Pretty simple. Um, but to me it's a big enhancement okay i just finished gluing down the halo light onto the bottom of the main base plate of the dust dust shoe uh you can see i filled in these four pockets here they're hollowed out spaces avid does that just to uh, save weight i'm sure um the i just put a like clear tabletop epoxy or river table epoxy in there because i wanted a flat surface all the way around to glue onto I drilled a hole in here. Uh, this is a quarter inch hole so I could get the connector through. Uh, you could just cut these off and re-solder them on the other side and then you wouldn't need nearly as big of a hole but quarter inch in this spot is no big deal. So the uh, these are the lights I got. Um, it's a they're kind of they're headlight halo lights uh, for a car. They work from 12 to 24 volts because they come with this little inline current regulator so this is what allows you to use such a wide voltage range with the LEDs um, and this is a is it regulates current so it keeps the LEDs uh, from burning out easily so you need to keep that in the um, somewhere in your uh, power chain I'm gonna run these off of 12 volts um, these come with and I'll put links in for all of this stuff too um, these come with a a plastic cover on them like this is the original this is what they look like this set these come in a pair so it's got a, a pretty tall about a quarter inch tall plastic protective uh, lens slash cover and some foam surface contact uh, adhesive you know it's an adhesive back foam you peel this off and stick it on uh, at least for me here in Arizona this foam sticky adhesive things never really seem to last very long i could have just peeled that off and stuck it down on here but <clears throat> at least in the arizona heat that glue tends to turn to goo in about six months and this thing would be falling down into my spindle at some point or into the bit so i like to i like to glue this on i use the flexible glue it, this e600 is great um goop is another brand that's great but i wanted something a little bit flexible because this whole ring has to move just a little bit on these three joints because this uh, bushing here goes around the spindle and then the the bolt in here is what clamps that to the spindle. So it has to constrict a little bit. Uh, Avid does a great job. I mean, the tolerance on this is pretty tight in this. So it it's almost tight fitting already when it slides on. So it just doesn't have to move much, but if I glued it down with like epoxy all the way up to the edge here, it would definitely probably buckle this uh it's kind of like a little mini circuit board that holds all these leds so uh instead i didn't get real close to the edge so there's a little bit of room for movement and then i puddled this glue up and just kind of set it on top so it's not glued down real tight so hopefully that gives it enough flex um so yeah i just took a side cutter here and basically clipped this cover and then I could pop out the little circuit board. And this is in cap. These diodes are all encapsulated in a clear kind of rubbery material. So it's well protected enough anyway. My last dust shoe, uh, the LED lasted a couple of years or actually three years. Uh, it broke for other reasons. And then I, when I got this one from Avid, which is much more robust, uh, I just threw that other one away. So... Um, I'm confident this this is very low profile now. It's not even an eighth of an inch tall, so it doesn't get in the way of anything. The dust doesn't stick to it much. Um, you can blow it off the air compressor really easy. So that's it. Uh, when the glue is dry, we'll flip it up and hook the rest of it up and see how it looks. 
Okay, just to see everything mounted here. So the laser I added over here, um, it's on the, uh, I guess you'd call it the base plate of the Z axis. So this goes up and down, but I did not mount it way down here because I have a tendency to hit clamps and stuff there and I wanted to protect the laser generator. So this is a regular crosshair generator. What I had in my old dust boot was a pair, basically they were spread at two different points at 45 degree, uh, degrees from the center of the spindle and I could adjust them. And the nice thing about that is they weren't crosshair generators, they were line generators and I could adjust them so that they converged right in the axis of the spindle. The problem was every it was hard to keep them really aligned with the spindle and the idea was that I could come in at a very high height and find my touch plate or align things kind of roughly from over by my workbench over there visually without having to come over here and line things up but it didn't work out that great so this is actually a laser crosshair generator so when you turn it on it generates both crosshairs right uh, right out of the uh, just single generator whereas the other ones were two lines that I had to align so uh, the reason I added this uh, the, like I said the other one didn't turn out to be as useful as I had hoped but I added this one because the new coming EX control system that Avid is bringing out now um, actually supports a crosshair uh, so they've got a basically a, a an offset function in there where you can line up the crosshair and you could program an offset that's kind of you know a static value that you put into the uh, CNC 12 software from from Centroid and then by aligning you can so you can have an X and Y offset so I can turn this generator on and align this crosshair up with any point and then it will offset that to my uh, spindle or for that matter anything I want I could align it to my laser or other things too but so I put it back here out of the way I'll put a, a link in the uh, description section for the generator I use I, I picked this one because it's very bright it's green I like the green color it's a lot more visible to me than red uh, I've noticed from shooting sports that you know like the the green fiber optics and the green lasers for pistols are a lot easier to see at least for me um, than red so I picked this it also has a very you can see it's a very consistent and a very small sharp line so it's it's the most accurate one I could find at a reasonable price uh, this one was forty dollars or so on Amazon and then it uh, is wired up I have basically just a little you know these oval shaped junction boxes up here so my 12 volt comes in and then it splits to one way or the other between the laser which is my two lines here and the single line which is the uh, light for the dust shoe so it's pretty simple wiring I bring 12 volts in from my control box it comes in here and splits I did uh, as I mentioned before the the LED halo light has a uh, voltage regulator that was a nice small thing it actually fits in here the uh, crosshair laser is a nine what is it seven to ten volt device so it doesn't you don't want to run it off a of 12 directly or you'll burn it out so what I did was I added a 60 ohm uh, resistor in the cable bundle here and that lowered the voltage enough I got it down to about nine volts so I wanted to stay safely within that range so that this laser lasts you you definitely with LEDs too high a voltage will kill them pretty fast and so you definitely want to stay under their uh, max operating voltage so you can put a voltage regulator on you know to set it at 8 volts or something like that too but I had a bunch of resistors so I played around and found the right one that for the current that this draws gave me enough give me about 3 volts uh, or, or 4 volts of uh, voltage drop so you can play around with that so that's the crosshair now if we switch this over now that's the light you can see up here that halo light is nice and bright around the spindle and uh, it's basically giving off the same amount of light as my other one so now I'm gonna put the cover on and you can see what it all looks like um, with the brushes and everything so now I put the the dust shoe and the bottom cover on so this bottom cover on Avid you can see has a large diameter with a bunch of magnets so the brush just stays here and then this part is covered up uh, for vacuum so if I turn that light on you can see it it's a nice light that surrounds the whole thing and 
If I put this brush in here, the light is still coming out of there nicely. If I turn it off, you can see. So that gives a light 360 degrees around the bit, which works really well for videoing, and also I can really see what's going on inside there. Now I'm going to modify my uh, brushes here because I like to be able to see. So I'm going to cut those. There, I have three different heights that come with this Avid Dust Shoe, and I'm going to treat a uh, couple of them a little differently than the other and I'll explain why um, after I do that. All right, now I wanted to show what I did with these uh, bristles or brushes. So you can see, um, you basically you have to do something with the brushes to be able to take advantage of light. So I got the light shining under here and I need to be able to see through these. So I have, um, Two kind of situations here. I have long bits like this end mill, and I have my typical short bit like quarter inch end mills or eighth inch end mills. Those typically need either the really short brush that comes with the Avid kit or the really long one that comes with the Avid kit. And by the way, I also tack welded the, the joints on these together. Um, when Avid rolls these, uh, they're at least mine. Mine was kind of an early model, so maybe they've changed how they make these now. But uh, with these two ends that weren't joined together, it didn't it didn't stay quite as good. It tended to kind of move around when it was brushing against things. So uh, I like I just tack welded those together. But um, with these size bits, for example, a quarter inch end mill running at sixteen thousand RPM. The surface speed is surprisingly slow. It's only about 17 feet per minute. Now that's, that's incredibly slow. A bow and arrow is like 300, right? So um, they don't really throw chips very far. So you don't need to have a perfect seal. Um, I've used on my old dust boot, I had a big hole cut in all of mine so I could see what I was doing just like this. And with these small bits, they just, the airflow going in here, from the vacuum, you know, and I got a, I got a two horsepower dust collector. So it draws a lot of air in there. There's no chips coming out there. So it really doesn't make any difference at all. So now the nice thing about the Avid one where my old one couldn't do this is I can adjust this window anywhere I want to see from the room. And the, and the second benefit is when I'm cutting deep grooves and things, I want to clear those chips out of the groove and away from the bit to A, keep it cool and get those chips up in the air so the dust collector can suck it in. So I always like to get my air nozzle in there, adjusted down in that, and that really helps get those chips out of there and not pack into the grooves when you're cutting things. So you, you can't do that without a gap in there as well. So I get the dual benefit of being able to see, and you can tell here with you know without the light, that, that light really helps. So I, got, I did a short one and a tall one for my end mills, and then I'll show you what I did for the other situation. Okay, now the other situation is my two and a half inch slab slayer it's for surfacing off tables and big surfaces. Now with this radius at 16,000 RPM, which is about the speed I run this at, that's 175 feet per second um, surface speed of this. So those chips are coming out of there fast. And generally you're hogging them off as fast as you can. So they have a tendency, like they would shoot right out of this hole. Um, and those, you want the bristles actually down onto the wood surface, um, to kind of seal that up. Otherwise I've actually had some where the bristles aren't strong enough and it would actually shoot the chips right underneath and out. So in that case, I don't want an open window like these. So what I did there is I spread the crimp on the metal band that holds the bristles and instead of, um, with these, I just cut them off with a side cutter. By the way, kudos to Avid because these are some really tough bristles. You you literally have to use like a side cutter or something. It almost cuts like copper wire. They're so tough. Um, but I cut those out and then I, I loosened this crimp up and I put this, I got this piece of, uh, it's like two, two or three millimeter. Uh, it's kind of like rubber. Um, it's actually like placemat material. Like if you've seen really heavy placemats on top of tables and stuff, that's what this is. I bought it off of Amazon. I'll, I'll see if I can find the link and put that down below as well. 
but this stuff is real flexible. It's real clear. And so again, I can see there, but this is flexible enough and it keeps those wood chips bouncing off inside of there and keeps them from shooting off the side. So for, for these large bits, I need to seal it all the way around, but you're still able to make something like this with the window in it. So you can see what's going on. Cause again, um, I like to see, is it cutting well? Is it burning? You know, what's the surface look like in there? Um, you know, and it's also much better for videoing, obviously, like I do a lot of, but, uh, so, you know, when it's dark, when that's off, I just, I, it, I don't like the feeling of not being able to see in there. And, and my work is almost, I don't do repeat. So I'm sure it's fine having a solid brush when you're doing production work because you debug your setup and your feeds and speeds and all that on the first one. And then you go make a million of them or whatever, and you just keep running them. So you don't, you don't really care. You're not watching it. But for me, everything I make is kind of a one of a kind. I don't, I don't do second projects ever. So I want to see that first one. I want to see what's going on and make adjustments to my feeds or, um, it, sometimes I need, sometimes I actually machine, using jogging or something and I need to see what's going on. So that's where, um, that was it. Basically you've got a, a light and a crosshair, um, got back to where I was before I got the Avid dust shoe. Very simple modifications. Didn't have to hack up this dust shoe really at all. Then drill one tiny hole in it. Um, so, and then, uh, cut some bristles off and, uh, it only took me, like an hour to get this all done other than the cure time for the epoxy. So pretty simple project. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you.